Hence, there must be a sovereign moral power authority established to rule over this transcendent dimension of humanity, which, by the way, is our freedom of conscience. And that sovereign moral authority, according to the Pope, would be himself, the holy, uh, the, the Bishop of Rome, according to a statement that he put out November, November of uh, 2007. So you may not notice it, but what's coming together here is a very sick web. Uh, we're going to get a little bit more intense uh, in the next couple of minutes, but I just wanted to lay down that groundwork so you can kind of get it in your head. What's going on? Very serious situation, ladies and gentlemen. Very, 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 very serious situation. The Bible told us that the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. That is exactly where we're at right now. If there was ever a time that we needed to be sober, it's right now. Five, five. Hi, Forerunner Chronicles, and we're back right now. Uh, very, 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 very interesting occurrences that are transpiring right now. So, um, we see clearly here that th there's something going on. There's a direct connection between the deflation, or rather the devaluing of the U.S. dollar, the establishing of a new economic or a global economic infrastructure and also the ushering in of the Pope as this sovereign moral authority over uh, global affairs. There's direct connections between all three of these things that I just presented to you here. And what what I find very interesting, I'm talking about this because what I find very interesting is uh, what just happened today. You know, today the um, President Barack Hussein Obama uh, met for the first time Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. It was absolutely uh, the footage that I saw of this. Uh, I believe it was from AP News. Absolutely um, nauseating. Barack Obama, President Obama comes in and uh, I'm so submissive, so submissive. It, it, it's actually pretty scary. Um, it's actually pretty scary. And he uh, greets him and says, oh, thank you so much. It's an honor. And he greets him. He greets him with the title, Your Holiness which I find to be mind-boggling. Your Holiness is the title that he greets him with. Now, I'm going through all this for a purpose. You might wonder, you might be wondering to yourself, well, where is he going with all of these things? Well, I'm going in a direct, I'm actually shooting in a straight line right now, so just stick with me here. Um, Barack Obama is working for the Pope. Let's just put it straight on the table first off, all right? This man is being manipulated by powers that are taking direct orders from the Vatican. That's the situation right here, all right? Now, we have a president, well, this is not our first president, all right? probably more so starting from the uh, Reagan era, we saw this, well, it really was the Reagan era, we saw this, uh, uh, um, this unprecedented friendship between the Oval Office, all right, and the Vatican. And it's, be, it's growing 
and has grown more and more and more troubling over the years. And now we're at a point where this is something that is common to the American people. But what you don't realize is that what's going on is the complete overthrow of all you know as American. All right. The reason I'm talking about this is because, ladies and gentlemen, the Vatican is the direct emissary of the United States of America. The Vatican is the direct emissary of the United States of America. America was established for the purpose of getting away from the Pope. This country was established and the gun, this, this government structure and this constitution was established primarily for the purpose of giving the citizens of this land the freedom of conscience or rather the freedom to worship as they chose and to not find themselves under the tyrannical hands of a pope. When this country was established and the Vatican tried to gain a little uh, foothold over here and they sent over some massive blocks of marble to be used in the construction of our capital. Do you know what the men that do you know what the men did that uh, were here at that time? They took those large blocks of marble and they pushed them right into the ocean to send a loud and clear statement to the Vatican about their feelings towards them. They wanted no part with the Vatican. But I guess we believe that all of a sudden things have changed. Things have changed. Things have changed. Things haven't changed. What's very interesting to know is that our president, Barack Hussein Obama, this man has more Jesuits in his administration than he has pens in it on his desk. All right. Obama's Chicago mentor was Gregory Galuzzo, who happens to be a former Jesuit priest. Obama's chief speechwriter that had all, that had all of you guys saying, "Yes, we can." Yes, he can. John Farvio, young guy, he was Jesuit trained at Holy Cross Jesuit University. Obama, Obama's deputy um, communications director, Dan uh, Pfeiffer, he was Jesuit trained. Obama's national security advisor, General James L. Jones, former com, com excuse me former commandant of the U.S. Marine Corps. Yeah, he was Jesuit trained. Security Director Janet Na uh, Napatalamo, it's a very interesting figure in recent, recent days as well. She was trained at Santa Clara University. Obama's Secretary of Defense, Robert Gates, a confirmed Freemason and Illuminati, was trained at Georgetown University. That's right, biggest Jesuit university in the United States. Obama's Secretary of Health and Human Services, Tom DeShell, another Freemason, and yeah, he's a Roman Catholic, and happens to be a visiting professor at the Jesuit-owned and run, that's right, Georgetown University. This guy has more than a handful of Jesuits in his inner circle. And if you don't know anything about the Jesuits, ladies and gentlemen, the way that Jesuits operate is primarily through the means of manipulation. They try to manipulate those who have the ability to make the changes that they want to see made or implemented. 
And remember that Jesuit's mentor, uh, Jesuit's mentor, Obama's mentor, was Gregory Peluso, a Jesuit. Happened to work alongside his father, um, his uh, father as well, Obama's father. Why should this be troubling to us? Well, there's two reasons why this should be troubling to us. And you're going to see how this directly connects to everything that I was talking about in the first couple of minutes of this program. This would be very troubling to us because a man by the name of Jacob Schiff, who was the, was the principal Jesuit that was sent here to the United States of America, he came here to the America with America with the assignment, with the task of taking over America's banking system and establishing a Federal Reserve. 